data setup code is the most duplicated code in test projects, and we know how bad duplicated code can be. All of that data setup code often relies on constructors, what makes it hard to read, maintain and evolve in the long term. So today I'm sharing with you my favorite pattern to address that. I'm talking about the builder design pattern, but we'll go one step further and talk about another topic that is often ignored when talking about the builder design pattern. So what is the builder design pattern and how does it work? Let's use a real world example. The number of ingredients on a pizza can be quite high. We can go as deep as talking about flour, water, salt, yeast, tomato, and the list goes on. However, each pizza is different. One might have cheese and the other not. One might have a thin crust, the other might have a thick one. But as a client, as someone that wants to order a pizza, you don't want to know all the details about how to make a pizza. You don't want and you don't need to know about hydration, flour, water ratios, all those things. Instead of going into details like the flour type, you can decide which type of crust you want. You will decide the combination of toppings that you want on your pizza. So we will take one of those decisions at a time while you are building our pizza. To this process of selection and the decision, we call it a builder. You can relate the builder to the conversation that you have on the phone when you are ordering a pizza or when you grab your phone and you go into the app to order what you want. That is the builder that is defining the specifications of the pizza that you will have. So to recap, in this example, pizza is like a data object while the selection process is a builder. However, we don't stop that. If you open an application to order a pizza right now, you will find there a list of predefined recipes ready for you. Napolitana, Margarita, Caprese, Carbonara, and the list goes on. To those recipes in our design pattern, we call them directors. All right, let's get our hands dirty and jump into the code. I will walk you through an example on how you can use the builder design pattern to have better and maintainable tests. We will be working on tests for this pizza class, which has multiple fields and as you can see as a complex constructor with many arguments and some of them are optional. When we have constructors like that one, it's common to see in your tests in the range step a lot of code like this. You define the state of an object that will be used to execute some tests, and then it's common to copy paste this piece of code into multiple tests, adjusting just one or two properties to adapt slightly to the new test. But what this means is that when you need to create a new test, you always need to define every single property, but also when that constructor changes, you will need to plate a lot of tests. So the builder design pattern is an excellent way to address this problem because we will restrict the access to the constructor and it's an excellent way to handle, for example, optional fields. Before we go on, let me just make one thing clear. I will be using this design pattern to address a common problem in tests. However, you can use this design pattern in your application code as well. How will we introduce the builder design pattern to avoid these multiple invocations to the constructor of pizza class and have better and maintainable code. The first thing that we'll be doing is create a class that will name pizza builder. Then we add to that class all the fields that we need to instantiate for that pizza class. And one important note is that usually you will want those fields as optional. You can always use a constructor to define one or more of those fields, but the common practice that we'll be doing to implement a builder is to create methods like this one. Each method will work as a kind of a setter that will receive one or many arguments. You will set them and then you will return the builder itself. This will give you the experience of a fluent builder. You will see that we'll call the method and then we can use the dot and keep building this same instance. Then you do exactly the same to the other methods. Once you have all of them, you will come up with a method that will call the build method. The build method is the responsible to convert all those definitions that you just set into the final instance of the pizza in this case. One valid option that you have is that if you have a given attribute that should always be set, you can always throw an exception on that case. You can use default values you can ask for them in the constructor. So let's see how we use this builder. Let's refactor this section to use the builder design pattern. You can simply go here and say new pizza builder. We define the size and then we use dot width. And I say that I want a stuffed crust 
then I want to define the source. And while in the other approach I was defining here the nulls, they were optional. I could avoid that for sure. Here, I don't need to do it by default. So by nature, I am not expected to do that. And if the signature change on the constructor, I will not need to update this test. And then when I'm happy with the definition that I gave to that pizza, it's just called the build method. And it's done, it's as simple as this. One thing that many don't like on the builder design pattern is the fact that by the end, you should call this build method. You always have one option. If you want to give the option to the consumers of this builder to avoid invoking the build method, what you can do is to take advantage of an implicit operator. That way your code knows that you can convert from the pizza builder to pizza by invoking the build method. If you want, you even can throw this method away and simply move this piece of code into here. This way, as far as the target type is pizza, you don't need to call the build method. So if I do this, I can throw away that build method. It's a small detail, but makes your code a bit more elegant this way. So we improve the data setup, we avoid invoking everywhere our constructor, but even then I can see a problem. You will notice that once your number of tests start growing, you will see the same configuration of the same objects repeated in a lot of places. For example, let's say that you are handling credit cards. You might have a given definition that you copy always that you want to represent an invalid credit card or when you want to represent an expired credit card, or when you want to represent a valid MasterCard or a valid Visa card. All of those are different configurations of the credit card object. So the builder design pattern alone will not take you there, will not avoid having that duplication of the configuration in a lot of places. However, we can take advantage on one concept that it's often ignored when we are exploring the builder design pattern, that is directors. So let's get back into our example of pizzas. We can say that this pizza builder is kind of like that option that you find in pizza ordering apps that you define your custom pizza, where you pick every single ingredient, where you pick every single thing for your order. However, if you open your application now, you will notice that you have there many common recipes. And in your tests, you will have the same. For example, I might want to use something like a margarita to test every single successful case. How do I do it? Instead of going here and convert this code into the use of a builder, what I can do is to introduce the director. So simply create a class and on that class add a method that will receive the pizza builder. And inside that method, you define all the instructions to create the margarita pizza. So now we simply create the pizza builder and provide that to the method inside of that director. So now every single time that I want that successful recipe in all of my tests, I can take advantage of this director and have it in a single place. And the same will work for the invalid cases. And to be honest, those are the ones that you'll be using more often, like the credit card example that I just gave you. But let's take a look into an example in the context of pizza. If I want a definition of an invalid pizza, obviously I will add to it a topping that will be pineapple, for sure. And from now on, every single time that I want to test the system to check how it reacts against an invalid pizza recipe, I just need to take advantage of this director. So on this case, I will once again create my pizza builder called the invalid pizza director, ask him to make a pizza, and then provide that pizza definition to the method under test. And by the way, you can always use the director to define kind of a bootstrap of that object. You set up the initial state and then you keep working inside of the builder and you call another method. For example, I can go here and change the source, for example. One important note is that you can see directors as optional in the builder design pattern. However, I found that they are often really useful when we are talking about tests. As you can see, by using the builder design pattern, we have made our tests far more simple and readable. Obviously, we could argue that by adopting this pattern, we are increasing the complexity of the system by the fact that the pattern requires multiple classes. However, as always, this is a trade-off. And in this case, it will save us a ton of time and will simplify our life in the long run. If you want more tips on how to simplify your tests, you can find them here. And before you go, please let me know in the comments if we should explore any other design pattern.